This is what I have in my haversack. Actually, it's not a haversack, it's an old computer bag. But with what I have in this bag, I feel I can get through an uncomfortable night in the bush if things go wrong. The bag and the contents weigh less than seven pounds, so it's quite comfortable to hike around in the bush with. Weight is the limiting factor into how much I carry. I carry a very basic first aid kit, which includes a few over-the-counter medications. One thing I have included in this kit is a quick clotting blood sponge, which I think is very important when using cutting tools in the outdoors. A whistle for signaling, which is more efficient than shouting if you get separated from another person. It's so lightweight, why not carry one? A good compass with a sighting mirror and with the magnetic declination set for my area which changes over time. Without a map for the area you are in, a compass is not that useful. Straight line travel is usually not possible or desirable in rough terrain that covers most of British Columbia. Extra large 3 mil plastic bags have a multitude of uses and weigh very little, a must have item. Now my cutting tools. This knife is not full tang and is not the best for heavy batoning, but I could easily get by with this lightweight knife. For me a small saw is my tool of choice because of its lightweight compared to an axe, and it being much more efficient than an axe. The toothbrush is for cleaning the saw teeth. This saw is a silky gomboy 240 with a 24 centimeter blade which cuts only on the pull stroke and the best part is it only weighs 272 grams. Haywire, always useful around a campfire. A good fire kit is essential and is the one thing you can afford to fail at as your life could very well depend on getting a fire started or at least make the situation more tolerable. With this fire starting kit I also carry more big lighters and a fire steel on my person as they weigh almost nothing and big lighters are what I start 99% of my fires with. I place elastic bands around the butane valve to prevent any chance of leaking. Also the rubber bands are good fire starter. The duct tape wrapped around the lighter is also a good fire starter. The fire steel is a backup that always works but lighters are easier and faster. Cotton balls and Vaseline and a couple of tea light candles round out the kit. Cordage in the form of 550 paracord and a few good knots is essential for many tasks including setting up tarps for shelter. Number 36 bank line or mason line can also be used but is not as strong as paracord. Stainless steel containers are best for carrying water as they can be used to boil the water to kill parasites and melt snow in. This blue seal nylon top is my main cover because it's strong and lightweight. This is a large so-called survival blanket which is much overrated as a piece of survival equipment as they are not very durable but they do reflect heat and are waterproof if they stay intact. This is an emergency blanket which has a reflective side but is much stronger than a regular survival blanket. This is a plastic painter's drop sheet which is large and quite inexpensive but not very durable. It's obviously waterproof and very useful to take advantage of the greenhouse effect. The clear plastic allows the radiant heat in and keeps the smoke out. I have a couple of candles which could be used for light as well as starting fires but my main source of light is a headlamp which I prefer over a flashlight because it's hands free.